All right, hello everybody. My name is Ian Cohn, and for my final video project, I am going to be talking about SIM, S-I-M, or Structured Illumination Microscopy. So Structured Illumination Microscopy is a super resolution uh, microscopy technique intended for fluorescent samples. So super resolution fluorescent imaging. And you may ask yourself, well, we already have techniques for fluorescent imaging. Why do we need this for super resolution? Well, a lot of those traditional methods have fundamental flaws that keep us from imaging very small objects. So I'll go through those now. Traditional methods are limited by what's called the diffraction limit. And the way it works is as follows. Light propagates through space, whether it's vacuum, air, water, whatever. Uh, actually, not as a single point, but it diffracts out as an area disk. So you're going to have a central peak and you're going to have some surrounding area uh, that is diffusing out of. And if the two points that you're imaging are far apart, it's easy to distinguish them. So we can tell features, we can get information as long as it's far enough apart. But there becomes a fundamental limit where if the two features are too close together, we simply cannot tell them apart. It's hard to tell if it's two peaks or just one peak that's very intense. And this is called the diffraction limit. So the minimum feature size that we're able to resolve is on the order of a wavelength over two. So it depends on the light that we're sending in. SIM tries to get past that by using moiré patterns. So you remember moiré patterns there. You take two line patterns and overlap them together, you're going to get some interference like this. So SIM uses those moiré patterns to encode fine structure information in the moiré fringes. So since the moiré pattern depends on each of those two line patterns, we can use the same concept to illuminate our target with a known illumination structure, have an unknown sample, and the two of those combined will create fringes. And from those fringes, we're able to extrapolate what our unknown sample was. So here's an example of how this increases your resolution. So initially, you're able to make out the fine structure of the two line patterns. But as we go further out, and let's pretend that this is actually our sample getting smaller, right? Even a smaller sample, we can still see those moiré fringes. So a way to think about this in Fourier space is that the diffraction limit actually acts as a low-pass filter in Fourier space. So that means that low-frequency signals can go through, but higher-frequency information just simply cannot propagate. And this comes from Maxwell's equations. And what that moiré pattern looks like is actually three dots in Fourier space. And around each of those dots is a concentric circle representing the low-pass filter in that space. So each of those line patterns has a low-pass filter, and the moiré fringes that we see have a low-pass filter. So you can see that increases our area. But then, if we then rotate those line patterns, until we get different and different moiré fringes, we're actually able to increase our Fourier space coverage by twofold. So we can probe twice as much, twice the area in Fourier space means two times higher frequency signals can be captured. So that much finer information we're still able to get even though we're not imaging it directly. Now, one of the ways SIM has been used is to look at Fitzy rings in cell division. So in cell division, you have these little rings that chop off the ends of the bacteria or a cell to split them up and create new cells. And it was thought that these were homogeneous, but what this pattern actually is is very heterogeneous and dynamic in time. So these proteins are constantly moving, constantly trying to get uh, more proteins on there so they can finally chop off that part of the cell and you can see that there's this bead-like structure. So it's completely different from what we were able to see using, say, wide field microscopy. And we're able to image features this small and probe biological samples like this, all because of structured illumination microscopy. Thanks for watching.